As you are aware, fellow Kenyans, that Madaraka Day marks Kenya's self-independence to achieve our self-rule on 1st of June 1963. This is when we gain full control of our political, social, and economic affairs. This year's theme of agriculture and food security aligns with our commitment to showcasing the Western region's economic potential, whose backbone is majorly agriculture. Madaraka Day allows us to reclaim and to celebrate our cultural heritage, fostering national pride and unity. Independence also elevated our status globally, enabling us to participate actively in international forums, and we have so far excelled in the Committee of Nations. 61 years after independence, we have a lot to celebrate for. As we commemorate this day, we remember our forefathers, their aspirations, and we recognize our duty as their descendants to continue working towards a prosperous future, just not for us, but also for future generations. The Western region, which encompasses Kakamega, Vihiga, Bungoma, and Busia counties, forms a vital part of our national fabric. This region is home to over five million people and is characterized by its incredible ethnic diversity and vibrant economic activity. The predominant Luya community, along with the Tesos, Sabaots, The economic activities in the Western region are diverse and robust. In Burundi, sugarcane farming drives the local economy, supported by the Transoia, uh, by the Zoia Sugar Factory, and numerous small-scale mills that are there for our people. Additionally, maize, millet, sorghum, and livestock farming sustain the community. Busia County thrives on fishing rice farming, and sugarcane, despite challenges posed by the floods. Kakamega County uh, balances subsistence and cash crop farming with a focus on sugarcane supported by the Mumias and Cabra sugar factories. The Higa County stands out with small-scale tea farming, quarrying, and dairy farming. Though gold mining in Ikolomani uh, poses challenges that are, uh, we are addressing as a government. The government has implemented several strategic interventions to support these economic activities. Efforts to revive the sugar industry include leasing public sugar mills, providing subsidized fertilizers, and supporting legislative measures like the Sugar Bill, number 34 of 2022. Agriculture uh, projects uh, such as the, sorry, uh, agricultural projects such as the Lower and Zoya Irrigation Project with additional funding of over 3.2 billion shillings and the establishment of industrial parks across the country, the Kipes, aim to boost productivity and economic growth. Affordable housing projects in Kakamega and Vihiga counties uh, are going to cost approximately 1.6 billion and are already providing env uh, employment and our, our conducive uh, investment environment uh, for our people. The government is also committed to enhancing infra infrastructure and social services in the region. The completion of phase one of the Masinde Moliro project in Kandui sub-county, costing Kenya shillings 807 million, and the rehabilitation of the Matulo airstrip, costing Kenya shillings 139 million, for commercial flights are significant milestones. Phase two of the Masinde Moliro project covering terraces Perimeter fence and access passes is nearly complete at an additional cost of 790 million Kenya shillings. When it comes to education, the investments such as the construction of an engineering and TVET complex at Masinde Muliro University reflects the government's dedication to improving access to quality education. The national environmental conservation efforts are ongoing within, 
with, uh, with initiatives like the presidential tree planting campaign aimed at uh, achieving 15 billion trees, and this is also actively ongoing in the Western region. Kakamega Forest is being fenced to support our cons conservation, and this goal is paramount. And uh, we are receiving substantial backing uh, from local communities and conservationists, and this is something we really appreciate. It's also good to reiterate that uh, during 10th May uh, National Tree uh, Growing Day, we were able to plant uh, 14 million uh, trees across the country, uh, led by the Eastern uh, and Nairobi. Uh, they are the ones that were leading. The government is well uh, ahead in putting resources to give a boost to the Western tourism circuit. Significant cultural heritage like the Kakapel National Monument and the Crying Stone, Ikongamurwe, Ikongamurwe, that's what it's called, of Ilesi are being promoted to attract more tourists. The deliberate hosting of the 61st Madaraka Day celebrations in Bungomba will enhance the region's national profile and infrastructure, showcasing its rich culture and economic potential. We are fully prepared for the 61st Madaraka Day celebrations. Comprehensive strategies have been put in place to ensure the safety and security of all attendees, residents, and visitors. An emergency prevention and management plan, along with a detailed traffic management plan, have been developed to ensure minimum disruption in business. As we celebrate Madaraka Day, we honor our forefathers' dreams and commit to a future of continued prosperity. President William Samoya Rapruto will be highlighting the key milestones with regards to agriculture and food security as a key pillar of the Better Plan agenda as enshrined in the Medium Term Plan 4 of the Kenya Vision 2030. Recently, our economy has grown and the GDP growth is strongly attributed to a rebound in the agricultural sector, which was able to grow up to 6.9% uh, in the last year. So you can hear this is a very important aspect uh, of, our, of, our, of, of our country, and that is why uh, we are um, here to brief you on what is it that um, we need to, to deal with. Uh, let me now turn to some uh, issue that has caused controversy. Once again, the issue of um, President Ruto's uh, visit to the U.S. I know some people are very interested in uh, uh, trying to poke holes into this whole visit. But I want to ask you, what is wrong with, uh, with uh, Kenyans having friends who can support such an endeavor? What is wrong with it? Yeah? I mean, that is why we need uh, you know, people who can support our development agenda. And so, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Kenyans, the idea that, and the president spoke that very well yesterday, he was only able uh, to spend 10 million from our taxes. The rest came from support uh, from, our, from our friends. And I think that for me, uh, you know, as the government spokesperson and for the whole of government, is a very good approach. Uh, because the, the Englishmen say, show me your friends and, and I, I will, I'll tell you who you are. So it's important and we need more of those. Uh, that is why the president uh, is engaged in international you know, economic diplomacy, uh, including even going uh, to another Asian country uh, in the next one week uh, to, make, to make sure that we cement our relationships uh, going forward. But be that as it may, uh, for the avoidance of doubt, it is good to report to Kenyans that uh, we have very great gains, and we need to reiterate that. We need to repeat that um, so that uh, we answer the questions, several questions have been asked concerning the state visit of His Excellency President William Ruto to the United States. And I wish to reiterate that the jet the President used to the United States was offered by the government of the United Arab Emirates. The people of Kenya spent only about 10 million, uh, majorly for fueling and other costs. The President's visit has led to several benefits and partnerships between the United States and Kenya, including the following. On the area of economic growth and trade, there is going to be increased trade between these two countries, 
and that will help our economy to grow. And if you want to doubt, look at the Japanese. After the Second World War, they were only able to rise again when they were able to have a Marshall Plan that they agreed with the United States of America. So this is very important. And this kind of growth also is for Mamambogas, the medium and small size enterprises, SMEs, uh, so that we have more people being able to improve on their business processes and therefore also commercialize and marketize and have a forwardly integrated uh, value chains uh, that are going to help them to even get access to markets that they would not have been able to do so heretofore. Um, and then also, <clears throat> the issue of Agoa is very important. And uh, we, ha we only had one special economic zone. Now we have about six. And there are more American companies who are willing to come on board. For those who don't know about Agoa, it's about manufacturing clothes here. That is why cotton is ve a very key value chain uh, for our uh, you know, you know, you know, you know, pri uh, priority, the nine priority ch uh, value chains. So, you can see there is already a, a ready market because Agoa has actually made many people uh, get employed. And if you want to prove, uh, just go to the other river and you'll see that. When you come to the issue of um, uh, health, over 910 billion will be invested in health. 910 billion, especially to combat HIV and AIDS, to reduce malaria about 50%. And this is going to help 1.3 million Kenyans to get ARVs and such other services, and also to reduce uh, child mortality and enhance maternal health. So you can see again that is very serious. 910 billion is not uh, small cash. When it comes to education, a total of 58.5 billion, please take this number seriously, 58.5 billion to help our, our fellow Kenyans uh, in training in terms of even digital literacy, uh, and to ensure that uh, we improve outcomes in terms of even research. If you look at our budget, we are reducing on expenditure on research, but here we have um, $540 million on the same. So that is actually amazing, a total of $58.5 billion in that regard. Then when it comes to the security sector, a total of $130 billion, yeah, to increase our surveillance. Uh, this has even 16 helicopters, as you are aware, uh, the Manda airstrip uh, is going, the runway is uh, going to be built three kilometers, 10,000 feet if you like, uh, just to ensure that we support and so that we also try to fight uh, terrorism and transnational organized crimes, you know, money laundering and illicit financial flows. So all of these uh, are very good uh, examples of what uh, that visit well, has been able to achieve. When it comes to the issues of rule of law, democracy and governance, a total of 26 billion 26 billion to strengthen governance, transparency, and accountability, including ensuring that we have proper judicial systems, use of technology, like if you remember during COVID, and even now you can attend your court proceedings from your laptop. I have had that um, experience myself, and it reduces the shame of you being you know, taken to court and appearing before a magistrate and all of that uh, shenanigans. Now you can do it from the comfort of your bedroom, if you like, but also to fast track a backlog of cases and also ensuring that we have proper legal uh, structures uh, um, and all of that. And fighting, again, corruption, uh, which is a great vice and menace uh, in our country. When it comes to agriculture, a total of 39 billion, you know, so that uh, we increase agricultural productivity, which is really a main pillar of the better plan uh, under MTP4 of the Kenya Vision 2030. When it comes to infrastructural development, we have a lot of 195 billion on various, uh, various infrastructural uh, programs, but um, especially the Nairobi uh, Mombasa motorway, the expressway, four to six lane at 471 billion. That will be a game changer so that you don't have to travel to Mombasa by nine, 10 hours, only 4.5. So you can either take the train or drive. And you know Kenyans love to drive and it's an expressway. So I think that is very important, also including urban development, because most of the Kenyans are coming uh, to uh, this, country, uh, this side of, uh, you know, to, they, are, they are coming to Nairobi and other cities. Uh, last week, my office had uh, an official tour uh, of Nakuru, and you can see how it's really growing, and it's projected uh, to have about more than three, four, five million, uh, 2027 and going forward. So for anyone who is asking a question as to whether there were benefits for the trip, 
I want to tell you it's minimal. The cost of travel was subsidized by our friends, but the benefits are much more than you could ever imagine, more than a trillion shillings. So I think that is very, very important uh, to respond to. Uh, but of course, let's not join our detractors, uh, some of them from the international arena who are trying to downplay the role. Remember, His Excellency President William Ruto is the first of the African countries in 16 years to ever you know, have a state visit. Uh, and so that is very important that is happening in our country. Just um, uh, today, I think we are concluding the Africa Development Bank uh, uh, official uh, 60th um, uh, anniversary uh, annual meeting. And we've had presidents like President uh, Mnangagwa uh, Emerson of, uh, of Zimbabwe. We've also had the President Kagame, the President of Somalia, the President of Tunisia, uh, Presidential Council, the President of uh, uh, Congo Brazzaville. All of them have been here, the Prime Minister of Namibia, you know, trying to showcase uh, what is it that we can do as an African continent, uh, including the President um, uh, of the African Development Bank, uh, 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 you know, Adesina, and also the Musafaki, the AU Commission Chair, uh, who is retiring, and we hope that our own uh, Right Honourable Raila Odinga will replace him as the fifth chairman uh, of, um, of the AU. You know, the word fifth is very political, uh, because, you know, we have the fifth president, and that was the contest. Of course, I am the fifth government spokesman. Let's come to the flooding emergency situation. The March, April, May long rains led to a flooding emergency that has left us in huge losses, including damages to infrastructure, displacement of people, and even death and injuries. The floods have subsid sub sub subsided, I beg your pardon, the floods have subsided, and the damages. You have right, uh, retired Colonel Samoei, who is the head of the National Disaster uh, Operations Center, and very senior officers. We have uh, Major uh, Simbili, Major General Simbili, who is here representing uh, uh, the, the head of the command center, Major Mason. And we have, uh, you know, other members of the Kenya Army, friend Susan Takai here. and many of the other you know, institutions that I may not be able to mention, all of them, uh, the multi-agency NDOC uh, continues to operate. Um, so far, approximately 306,552 Kenyans drawn from 61,304 households are still affected by the floods, with 58,064 households comprising of about 293,000 people displaced, 293,205. 38 persons are still reported as missing, but we are happy because that number was at some point as high as 75, while 188 people are injured and receiving treatment in various health facilities. We are sad to report as of today that Kenya, uh, the people who have uh, lost their lives since March is the number stands at 315. That is 242 adults and 73 children. We wish the injured a quick recovery and send our most sincere condolences to the families and friends of those who have lost their lives as government. Most parts of the country are expected to be generally uh, dry. However, rainfall is expected to continue over a few areas in the highlands, east and west of the Rift Valley, the Lake Victoria Basin and the Rift Valley. Additionally, strong southerly and southerly winds will, with speeds exceeding 25 knots are expected over some parts of the coast and northeastern. We urge fellow Kenyans, Wanainchi, to take caution and adhere to weather and flood alerts. A total of 183,521 acres of farmlands have been affected by the floods across 26 counties. This has resulted to losses approximately to about 3.7 billion, with Garissa and Kisumu counties bearing the highest losses. The government will support post floods recovery through distribution of seeds, fertilizers, agrochemicals and rehabilitation of farm infrastructure. 
The government is monitoring the situation in Chala Ward, in Taita Taveta County, very important, those areas of uh, Bosnia, um, near the Tanzanian border, where there is a suspected outbreak of an unknown animal disease from Tanzania, referred as Kichwa Changombe by the locals. The disease is said to have fatal consequences to animals and humans. Chungasana. The national government is working closely with the county government of Taita led by Governor Mwadime, in investigating as, in order to ascertain the situation and possibly effect animal disease prevention and protection protocols to prevent any further loss of human and animal lives. Despite these challenges forced by recent floods, the government has actually taken prompt responses and recovery efforts demonstrate our resilience as a country and dedication to safeguarding the welfare of all Kenyans. The government of Kenya has not failed its citizens. Here in Nairobi, over 26,000 families have already been given the 10,000 stipend as promised by His Excellency the President, and the remaining 13,000 and some few hundreds are being, still being verified by, uh, you know, the government led by County Commissioner Mr. Wanyoni, uh, uh, so that we make sure that we get the right people. Please verify your, your numbers. Some of the monies are bouncing back. Give the right uh, kind of information so that you don't get to miss what that which um, we've already, uh, you know, agreed. In conclusion, the government continues to support retired, uh, uh, continue to support uh, all of the senior citizens of our country and all of the uh, Inua Jamii programs as a key example of showcasing why we need our government uh, to say that really we are independent. The Madaraka celebrations cannot th therefore be there if people are still suffering. So the Inua Jamii program you will see in the new financial year will be robustly boosted to ensure we cover many more households uh, so that then they are cushioned uh, from the fragile situations that are emanating uh, from uh, climate change adaptation, knowing only too well that for the next seven years, we are going to receive above normal rainfall. As we prepare to celebrate the 61st Madaraka Day, we are reminded of significant strides Kenya has made since gaining self-independence. This year's celebration in Bungoma County and as core our commitment to regional inclusivity and national unity. Let me take this opportunity to wish all Kenyans a happy and independent Madaraka Day in advance. Happy Madaraka Day, Kenya itasimama, Kenya itainuka, Kenya itanawiri, kwa umoja na uzalendo. Mimi ni mkenya mzalendo. Jay, wewe. Thank you. Now we can have some few questions. Any question? Yes. Ni chaniangalie kabla nikose. Wa ni mchana. Habari za mchana sote. Ah daktari jina langu ni Ronnie Regan kutoka Idhaya Mo Radio. Nimependa mazungumzo yako kuna kitu ambacho umekitaja ukasema kwamba serikali inajitahidi inajisatiti kuhakikisha kwamba kila mmoja wa mkenya mpiga kura mlipa ushuru anapata haki yake. Tunapozungumzia haki tunafahamu fika kwamba aliyekuwa rais mstaafu na mzungumzia Uhuru Kenyatta alitumikia taifa kwa takriban miaka kumi kama rais. Alipoondoka tunaelewa kwamba kuna bajeti ya marais ambao wanastaafu pamoja na wafanyikazi wao e, magari yao kuwekwa mafuta, jinsi watakavyokula, jinsi watakavyosafiri na watakavyolala vile vile. Tumekuwa tukiona kwenye magazeti na vile vile vyombo vya habari taarifa kila uchao kwamba bajeti ya rais sasa hivi ni kama imetiwa makasi nikimaanisha kwamba imekatwa na kwa njia moja au nyingine imeshikiliwa hawezi akapata fedha za kuwalipa wafanyikazi wake afisini na hata kwa njia moja au nyingine kupata kusafiri 
Hivi karibuni tu mwana kwamba anatumia fedha zake kutoka katika mfuko wake kuwalipa wale ambao wanamtumikia na tunaelewa kwamba kivyo vyote vile rais hafai kus, kusumbuliwa kwa njia moja au nyingine kwa nini kauliza ili swali ili swali linajiri wakati ambapo siasa zimechacha sana na wanasema kwamba kuna ile damu mbaya kwenye mabano kati yake pamoja na rais William Ruto serikali inasema nini na msimamo wako haswa kama msemaji wa serikali asante sana Tony Regan kuna swali nyingine Any other question? Okay, mimi naitwa Anthony Nyongesa kutoka Tandao Television Bungoma. Swali langu ni wakati tarehe 21 ukiwa mjini Nakuru ulizungumzia ziara ya Rais William Ruto Marekani na ukasema kwamba hiyo ziara ina faida nyingi sana. Je, kwa nini hukuzungumzia kwamba ni serikali ya UAE ndiyo imeweza kufadhili hiyo ziara ya rais na ukaizungumzia leo baada ya rais kuizungumzia jana asante <laughs> wewe wewe <laughs> rafiki yangu nyongeza wewe ni mtu mtarashati sana nani mwingine ana swali i think we have a lady here yes good evening sir my name is Ian Byron from people daily uh, there's an emerging concern over this skewed uh, distribution of relief uh, to the victims of floods it's also emerging that the national uh, the provincial administration are doing it skewedly uh, what can you say about that okay yes madam you can be the last at least i take those ones nafamika kama millicent kubai nafanya kazi na kbc radio uh, katika ripoti yako ambayo umekozungumzia maswala ya mafuriko naomba uweke wazi labda shule ambazo ziliathirika hadi sasa umeshulikia swala hilo na vile vile unavyosema kwamba familia zimeanza kupewa ile 1000 labda watapewa kwa muda gani shukran asante wacha nianze na wewe kubai ladies first e, tayari zile shule ambazo zimeadhirika ni 1167 lakini nyingi zimeweza kurejelea uh, wakati kama wiki tatu zilizopita uh, kulikuwa tuna kama shule zote kwa kujumuisha na saba shule za msingi na za sekondari kwa sasa hivi watu wengi tu wameweza kurejelea kusoma uh, lakini kujaribu kuweza kurekebisha pengine nyufa pengine madarasa na kadhalika hilo ni jambo ambalo tunaweza kulizungumzia zaidi kwa sababu tutatumia pesa zile za CDF kwa hivyo shule ambazo zilikuwa zimeadhirika wakati wa mafuriko yalipokuwa yamekidhiri 1167 uh, kwa hiyo sasa hilo ndio jambo hilo ambalo tutaweza kulifa, kuli, kuliangazia zaidi na mgao wa, wa hizo fedha zilikuwa za mwezi mmoja tu eh ndipo sasa tuweza kutathmini kwa sababu sasa hivi tumeweza kutumia zaidi ya shilingi milioni tatu. Alafu sasa watu wataweza kuhamishwa, wengine waweza kupatiwa makazi mbadala. Lakini nashukuru wa Kenya wameweza kuwasaidia wenzao wakaweza kupata nafasi za kuweza kulala kwingine. Hata zile kambi zetu wengine walikuwa nakuja mchana kula mwishowe wanarudi kwingine usiku. E, nafikiri kwa mambo ya ugabi the people daily I think you asked the question around um, um, Uh, yeah the provincial administration is doing a good a very good job i can assure you without a doubt there is no skewed distribution of resources because most of these campaigns also for distribution have also been led by leaders i have participated in quite a number of them in agamra uh, in kilifi county in gidrai here in uh, kadibo kadiambo uh, nduru secondary there 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 have been people who have gone to many other missions across ministers pss and other senior government officials and and the the, the provincial administration always does a very incredible job this this food is not for sale so nobody is being sold uh, for so i mean let, let us just uh, put the record straight um, and and we'll continue to provide as and when the need is ar arises because we have a lot of requests still uh, because of the aftershocks uh, of this uh, of this uh, flooding situation uh, the other question that um, i think is anthony jongesa you are asking and um, you know my friend My role as a government spokesman is to defend the government and to explain what the government is doing. The number one spokesman for the government is the president. We take you from him. I thank you. Now, let's come to the issue of the retired presidents. Um I think there have been the problems my friend Tony Turiken with regards to how certain media houses have been reporting about the unfair 
ways in which the third retired president of the Republic of Kenya may have been treated. That is not true. By the way, when we say third retired, we don't mean President Kibaki. We mean President Uhuru because the first president never retired. He passed on in, in office. So that's why we say the third retired, because he never retired. So it's good you understand the terminology as journalists. Allow me, for purposes of uh, clarity, to give an official statement on this issue, so that it is not just you, members of the fourth estate, writing. Let me give you the official record, and I'm going to read. The government is committed to supporting the Office of Retired Presidents and other state officers in accordance to the laws. The Kenya Kwanzaa government is firmly against weaponization of state resources. The Presidential Retirement Benefit Act demands that former presidents receive pensions and other retirement benefits after leaving office. The Kenya Kwanzaa government is dedicated to upholding the law and the constitution of the Rep of Republic of Kenya. As President Ruto vowed to do, when he was sworn in. And contrary to some opinions, the government has consistently honored its obligation to retired presidents, vice presidents, and former prime ministers. President Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta has received a lump sum payment of 48 million Kenya shillings, equivalent to one year salary for each of the two terms he has served. 48 million. Additionally, he receives a monthly pension of 1.6 million Kenya shillings and monthly allowance, allowances actually, of another 1 million shillings, so that's a total of 2.6 million, which this 1 million is broken down to 200,000 for entertainment allowance, monthly house allowance of 300,000, a fuel allowance of 200,000 per month, and a monthly allowance of 300,000 of water, electricity, and telephone services. He also benefits from a comprehensive medical and hospital cover worth Kenya shillings 20 million for both local and overseas treatment for himself and his spouse. Importantly, all these benefits are exempt from tax. So I think that is important to say that. Further, the, th the retired third president enjoys a fully furnished and maintained office space of his choice, and he chose uh, uh, his residence next to Dennis Preet there at Get D of State House. It's official. And this is fully furnished and paid by the government. He is entitled to two new cars of his choice that should be replaceable every three years with an engine capacity of at least 3,000 cc. Additionally, he is entitled to two other vehicles with an engine capacity of 3,400 cc, also replaceable every three years, and he was also allocated these vehicles on retirement, and their replacement will be factored, or will, they are due for replacement in the year, financial year 2027-2028, so they are still current. But they are still being serviced, and he, there are even cards to ensure that there is fuel, and we have documents to show that. The third retired president, His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta, is by law entitled to four vehicles at the expense of the state, whereas the former first lady, Her Excellency Mamangena Kenyatta, is also entitled to enjoy half the benefits of a retired president as a spouse to a former head of state. However, the office of the third retired president, His Excellency Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta, and Her Excellency Mamangena Kenyatta have a total of 12 vehicles so they are supposed to be four, but they have 12, actually. At the expense of the state, or funded by the state, these are two Toyota Land Cruisers with a 4,000 cc engine. The minimum is 3,000, but you can see that one. One Mercedes-Benz, 5,000 cc. Four Toyota Prados, 2,700 uh, cc engine. Two Range Rovers, 4,200 engine cc. And also 5,000 engine, and, they, and one Subaru. It's, it's really, they are quite a number. I don't need to read the whole list. But these vehicles are fully fueled and maintained by the government. 
And of course, the former president has been issued with four fuel cards, and Her, Excell Her Excellency three of them. So they are well, well, very well catered for, uh, to reckon. Um, um, they are very well taken care of, completely. Additionally, the government has facilitated repairs and maintenance of the vehicles attached to the office of the, of the third president and the former first lady when they do the requisition. In the 2023-2024 financial year, the office requested services and maintenance of four vehicles, all of which were approved and facilitated. A retired president is entitled to about 34 staff. The office of the third retired president already has 33, so they have one more slot that they can ask for because they are the ones who supplied the list of the quality, two photographers, two paramedics, one principal programs officer, one principal finance officer, one editor, one social media manager, one director on office, office administrative duties. On top of the 33 staff, the former head of state continues to enjoy VIP protection and all of his homes are well and heavily guarded by the police. To address concerns about the size of delegations accompanied by former president during his engagements, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs recommended a lean delegation of 10 staff for his international engagements. This includes one private secretary, one aide de camp, one doctor, one advisor, one protocol officer, one hospitality officer, two security officers, and two media stroke press persons. This recommendation was approved by the Chief of Staff and the Head of the Public Service, the Honorable Felix Koske, who instructed the State House Controller, Katole Metito, to implement them as part of the government-wide austerity measures. So I think that is very clear. Delegations are only limited to 10. You are the same people who are asking us about uh, the trouble. The government also continues to honor and dignify not only uh, the office of that retired president, but other senior retired state officers, including the former Prime Minister Right Honorable Raila Odinga, the first retired Vice President Honorable Moody Awori, uh, and the second retired Vice President uh, Honorable Kalonzo Musioka, each with three vehicles, in line with the Presidential Retirement Benefits Act after its gazettement in the Kenya Gazette Supplement Number 108, Act Number 12 of January 9th, 2004, and the Presidential Retirement Benefits Amendments Act 2013 in the Kenya Gazette Supplement Number 16, Act Number 9 of January 25th, 2013. These vehicles shall be replaced as per the schedule every three years, uh, and of course as per the provision of the law. So I think, uh, my friend, from Imo Radio and TV, eh, Regan, I have answered you comprehensively and for all of the other media stations. So this debate about whether we are to naganamiza Rais Ali Estaf, kama serikali, sio ukweli, sio ukweli hata kidogo, kwa maana yeye, amesha alipa marupurupu ya mshara wake, wa mwaka moja, kulingana na sheria, shilingi milioni, arobaini na nane. Kila mwezi analipua, pension yake, malipa ya uzeeni, ya shilingi milioni moja nukta sita. Lafu kuna marupurupu mengine allowances ukipenda milioni moja. Kwa hiyo unaona tayari anapata shilingi milioni mbili nukta sita. Anafanyi kazi thalathini na watatu kati ya wale thalathini na wane ambayo yeye mwenyewe ama ofisi yake ndi imetuitisha. Magari, anamagari, anafaa kuwa na magari manne lakini amepatiwa magari kumi na mawili yote ambao yanawekwa mafuta na serikali na yanafaa kubadilishwa baada ya miaka mitatu mwaka mbili, ishirina saba, ishirina nane. Serikali hii pia imepunguza eh, wale ambao wanazasafiri na yeye kwa sababu fano wakati wa kukuli Afrika Kusini, anafaa kusafiri na watu kumi peke yake kwa sababu ilikuwa ni idadi na watu wengi zaidi, na hapa ndiyo mnauliza maswali pia kama wanahabari kuhusu vile tunavyotumia pesa za umma. Kwa hivyo kwa marefu na machache yupo salama, hata mama mwingine Kenyatta anafaa kupatiwa nusu ya yale malipo ya rais mstaafu pia yeye anazingatiwa vilivyo 
na sio tu hao peke yake paka yale magari ambayo yanatumika kirasmi na mheshimiwa Raila Odinga mheshimiwa Kalonzo Musyoka mheshimiwa Mudi Awori yote yanagharimiwa na serikali kwa sababu hiyo ndiyo haki yao kulingana na mujibu wa sheria ambayo iliweza kupitishwa na kufanyiwa marekebisho mwaka mbili kumi na, na, na tatu ilipopasishwa mwaka mbili na nne kwa hivyo mtu awaye yote haijalishi mrengo wa kisiasa serikali ipo kuhakikisha kwamba ile haki imetendewa na hata pia wabunge ambao wameweza kus, eh, kustaafu baada ya kuwa bungeni kwa mihula miwili pia wao wenyewe wana pension yao pia majaji wakuu ambao wamestaafu kama Maraga na pia Mutunga pia wana haki zao kwa hiyo hii ni kulingana na mujibu wa sheria hamna nafasi yoyote ya tetezi za kisiasa ama kujilipikizia kisasi na nafikari unafikiri tunataka kusema e, vyombo vya habari viweze kupata uhakiki wa kile ambacho serikali unachokifanya kwa mapana na marefu tuseme kwamba tunashukuru ili tuweze kuwa na siku kuu njema ya madaraka day watu waende kujivinjari alafu turejelee kazini tuende kujenga taifa asanteni sana mheshimiwa rais wetu ambaye ndiye msemaji wa kwanza wa serikali hii atazungumzia zaidi akihutubia taifa kesho pale Bungoma uh, tukubalie tumalize ndio pia sisi tuweze ku, uh, ku, kuandamana tuende kule asanteni sana na Mungu wabariki